about quarter to eight. We're on Happy Beach, Happy Bay. And this is the view from Happy Bay Beach. That's the way we've come. about 10 to 8 we're at the end of Happy Bay Beach and um, through the rocks that's the way forward but I'm going to show you the alternative route in case you need to that's across the rocks over there over the top A reasonably well used path. Careful of your footing, once again, sand under your feet, sand under your shoes can be quite slippery. It's about five to eight, and there's a valley on the left-hand side as you're going up the beach to the caves. Or a rift. It's really a lovely day for a hike. It's just about 8 o'clock now. That rock in front, the birds on top. I believe that rock is called High Rock. Uh, let me just get out my map here quickly. The map isn't all that clear. I'm not sure how accurate it is. But this is the highest rock on the beach as far as I know. And this might be called High Rock in Afrikaans, Ruhrkop. Um, I was camping in the cave once, and uh, the next morning I had to run back to Gintana Beach to get some fresh water um, because there's, there aren't any facilities at the caves. Um, and as I ran past this rock, there was a gull on top. We decided that I must have been a threat, a threat of, of some sort, and it started attacking me. And dive bombed, kamikaze, it went ballistic. I had to duck and weave to get out of the way, and coming back on the way again, same story. So, um, in my mind, this is called Gull Rock. About five past eight, and I believe this is known as flat bunkies or the flats in English. And I've seen some anglers on these rocks many times before. Um,
probably catching the daily meal. Whoops. Don't slip. Watch your footing. It's about quarter past eight and this is the first view of the wreck. This wreck is actually not a shipwreck as many people think um, but it is a, it used to be a, a floating dry dock and it stranded here in 1902. Um, the story was that it needed to be transported to uh, Durban Harbour on the east coast of South Africa and as it passed Marshall Bay uh, a storm arose on the seas and one of its um, mooring lines broke if that's the proper word one of its towing lines broke, broke and uh, there were quite a few attempts to uh, to save it again there was a second line attached but that also snapped and then eventually due to the rough seas it was decided to abandon the effort and eventually it washed out here um, if I remember my facts correctly a certain Mr. George Parks obtained the salvage rights and he came here and stripped down I suppose he had a whole team of men doing it um, stripped down whatever they could salvage from the dry docks as you can see it's broken into one two three pieces and on Google Maps you can see them lying in a line diagonally running into the sea um, today with uh, spring low tide it is actually possible to approach the front the front part of the of the wreck without getting too wet um, and for the more adventurous among us you could actually climb on top it is tricky and the structure is rusted so if you get a pick up a scrape or cut yourself on on the jagged edges that could land you in hospital And we're going that way. Oh yes, just behind us. There's a little holiday beach house. Apparently the owners have a garage on top of the hill, uh, which you can't see now. And they park there and then come down a path. I'm not sure how clear the path is, but I can see a diagonal line zigzagging down the cliff. It goes into the valley and comes out at the back door of that house. Oh, there are some people on the porch. <laughs> 